Dr. Michael Light, now your host, Tony Burnett. Hey everyone, and welcome to Mind Over Magic. My name is Tommy Burnett, and I will be your host for the next hour. Yay! Why? <laughs> we have a wonderful uh, studio audience. Let's take a look at them now. Everyone can say hi if you want to. Yay, hello, Facebook. And uh, now back to me, the handsome young man that I am. Yeah, so uh, a lot of people have been asking why am I doing another podcast. And the only answer is because people have been asking me to. Um, I honestly wasn't planning on it, but uh, anyone who remembers magic and mysticism, I had the opportunity to talk to all of these wonderful people at some point during my uh, tenure as the host of uh, magic and mysticism. And as you can see, there are a lot of uh, unbelievable performers here, and tonight is absolutely no exception whatsoever. Tonight we have a, uh, we all know him, we all love him. He's a great performer, he's an author, he's a musician, and he's an illustrator. He's a graphic designer. He does it all. He does it all. And we're going to delve into the mind of my next guest. Please help me welcome Dr. Michael Leike. Thank you so much, Tommy, for that wonderful introduction. How can I live up to that? I don't know. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, you do it every day. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm just calling it like it is, right? Um, but thank you for uh, being on the show. I, uh, I really appreciate that. And I gotta see if I can turn off those notifications. Um, anyway, yeah, so I know most everyone here in the, in the studio knows you, but why don't you uh, introduce yourself a little bit and let people on the world of Facebook and hopefully YouTube when I put it up there later, uh, who you are and, and what you do. Wow, seriously? <laughs> Where do I begin? That that's a, a, a huge question. And, yeah. this, and my wife would say he's very good at talking about himself, so you know, let him well, have good. That. I can take a, I can take a break. <laughs> uh, at this point in my life, which is uh I'm almost sixty eight years old. I'll be sixty eight if my wife lets me July twentieth in just wow. a few weeks. And um wow. Uh, at this point in my life, I'm not schlepping magic props around, with, which I used to. Um, my background is graphic design. I went to college back home in Montreal for it. So I took um, two years of graphic design, one year of commercial arts. And right after finishing, I jumped right into that whole advertising thing. And if you're from Montreal or New York, you know it's very much like Mad Men, like that TV series Mad Men. So that whole ad scene back, I guess it was the 70s, then it wasn't the 60s, it was the 70s when I finished college. It was like that. And uh, typical, when I was doing freelance, I'd have many, many interviews. I'd set up I'd phone hundreds of people a day, hundreds of companies a day, and uh, then I'd go down for my interview and look, and there'd be like 100 people in the waiting room. So that's typical of a large city, of a big city, um, versus another town or city I moved to many years later where the competition wasn't as great. But I continued for many years doing graphic design and cartooning my first love, Tommy. That was um, really how I learned how to draw. Um, I was, I think, five or six years old in the hospital having my tonsils and adenoids out. And there was a chalkboard, uh, the famous chalkboard. 
and um, <laughs> I drew I drew the Flintstones, and all the little the other kids that were there they could recognize it, and the nurses were all impressed. And it's like, but this is what I do. This is what I do. I can I can I I wouldn't say that. You know, it's kind of like yeah. So I can also draw Batman and Superman. I used to trace them until I perfected that, and eventually made it into a career of graphic design because my father always said. You need a trade, Michael. We're Jewish, right? Michael, you need a trade. So it became <laughs> graphic design, and I loved it. I I got to um, eventually draw a syndicated comic strip. At the time, it was the only Canadian syndicated comic strip. It was called Winnie Witch and the Giant Potato. And um, my oh, boss was a big oh, stickler for Disney. He was a big Disney fan. He had the hugest collection of Disney stuff in North America. There were a lot of articles written about him, and he was my boss. And I learned animation that way on the job and cartooning. And uh, uh, what a thrill that was. What a great opportunity. I went on to do editorial cartoons for uh, many papers, not completely across Canada, but in Montreal, Toronto, Winnipeg. As soon as I moved to Vancouver, boom, it all stopped. But that's a whole other story. In any case, um, with that, parallel to that, I was loving magic. I know that's, this is relevant to our uh, to our theme here. But yeah, I a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, just a wee bit, mind over magic, how does this all relate? I don't know. Um, but um, as a young kid of five or six years old, I used to love monster magazines. You, I'm sure most of us out there remember Monsters of Filmland, that uh, monster magazine. And um, I ordered my first one and got it in the mail. I feverishly, like we do with magic, right? I feverishly opened up the envelope and there was this full color gorgeous magazine with pictures of frankenstein and dracula and not only the universal creatures but also um the hammer the the british ones um and i i there was something i loved something that intrigued me and moved me and i don't know why but i could relate to it particularly dracula bella bela lugosi and uh, Chris Lee for some reason. But also mm. parallel to that was magic, my love of magic. Growing up in Montreal, we had many magic shows on TV every day. But we got the Magic Land of Alakazam, which um, was Mark Wilson from the US, of course. Um, but we also had a local magician, and here comes where I got my name from, Magic Tom, Magic Tom Auburn. And he had a show six days a week, on the Saturday, it was in French because we kind of have to be bilingual if you're from Montreal. And mm -hmm. um, his props intrigued me as well. I remember we'd call it the mutilated parasol. He did that many times on his TV show. And there was something tactile or really neat that I loved about it. And all his props, he had like a little vase and he'd make candy. It would be empty and then candy would appear. And um, I loved that. I didn't realize that one day I would have very, very similar props and perform for hundreds of thousands of children and families down the road. So that was um, that was a little bit of my formative years. And you fast forward to when I'm about 14 years old and guess who's on TV the amazing Kreskin, the amazing Ooh. Kreskin. I still Ooh. love him. Uh, he, I think he's in his 90s, but the man's yeah. a genius. And I already had a few uh, trick decks. That's all I'm going to say, because I know some. we have some lay people, some non-magicians in our audience. Um, what? 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 <laughs> I, I've never heard of that before. What? What? <laughs> I feel like a Svengali, and um, so ooh, uh, you can mark my I feel word. Like <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, and um, so I was able to look <laughs> at Kreskin shows and figure out some of those uh, effects. I, I think I said tricks. That's a no-no. And um, one of my first ones was Wild Card, an effect where there's a number of cards and they all become all the same of another card. I saw him do that and I thought, wait a second, I can do this. And 
because I had books at that point and, and certain other things that I needed. And uh, the rising cards I just did the other day, I think on either open mic or Tuesday Night Magic is one of my favorites. I saw Chris can do that as well. So that inspired my mind reading or mentalism or thought reading, if you will. But as I grew older, uh, I got into guitar in my late teens. I loved Cat Stevens. Uh, I still, well, I haven't in a, a little while, but I, I own several guitars and uh, did a couple of, a few gigs in Montreal, uh, singing and playing. Um, some people either hate my stuff and they cringe and they close their, they, they block their ears or they dig me. They either like me or they hate my music and uh, it's whatever. You know, it's just a, a, a thing to share. I'm just hoping you don't have a clip of me singing the uh, Just Say No song or Puff the Magic Dragon a little later. That's embarrassing from my TV show. But, yeah. Um, yeah. No, but I, I gave a little talk about that. I actually, uh, I am going to play a clip from that show. Um, the one where you do the... Uh, uh, have well, first of all, I really like the fact that you have. I didn't realize it was a kids show, um, yes. and it was geared towards kids. And I really like how you had um, puppets and um, music. You played guitar and you did your cartoons. Um, I really, I think it's. So he, uh, I mean, back in 1970, uh, it, that was, well, I'm sorry, 1980 and 1990s, um, that was a good, a good fit. Um, and you can probably still make a play today, but uh, I really, I really thought you did a really good job with it. And um, I think at this point, we're going to play a clip of you doing, uh, you have a puppet uh, select a card, and then you do something magical as always. So here is Dr. Michael in his magic castle. Welcome back to the castle again this week. We have the return of Scott Burton to do a trick. We have some new material. Oh, hey, Dusty, how are you this week? I'm fine. You have a new trick for us this week? As a matter of fact, I do. I was just telling the boys and girls about it. We'll set you over here, and maybe we'll call on Desmond and Forgetful to help with this one. We'll see. Oh, oh hey, Wiz, how's it going? Forgetful, I'm over here. Oh, there hey, I am. hey, that's you. This is me. This is me. And oh, hey, wait, but I thought this was you. No, no, this is this is big and round, very large and dark. And uh, oh, could be your brother, I guess. Eh? I'm wondering if you don't need maybe glasses. Do you need glasses? Oh no, I think I need more rest. Oh, probably. There he goes. Let's see if Desmond is here. Hey, there's Desmond and his cool shades. Yeah, my chocolate bar, sunglasses here. Take a wheel. That's uh, scratched and sniffing. Eh? Yeah, take a wheel. Go ahead. Oh, that's great. That's good, like, eh? uh, yeah, it smells just like a candy bar. Mm -hmm. That is really, really good. Well, I'm going to need your help, maybe Forgetful's help as well with this, uh, oh, dear, you crazy with man. this new one. We'll see. Uh, yeah, we'll do this one. We'll do this one. Most likely. Now we're going... Are you not sure of this? Well, it's a new one, so we're going to try this out. We're going to use several props. We're going to use, uh, first of all, a deck of playing cards. A deco playing cards. A deco playing cards. There should be uh, 52. 52. And I don't think there's a joker in there, though. Nope, no joker. All right. Deck of playing cards. We're also going to use a little glass. We're going to use little clips like that. Little a clippers. little glass. A little clips. And we're also going to use these little blank cards. And some here. little blank cards. That's right. Little blank cards. Now, let's see. We'll, we'll work this way. We'll take the clips. Now, this is very special blank paper that we have in there. It's special uh, light-sensitive and magic-sensitive paper. So we've so got to... you don't want to get no fingerprints on there. That's right. That's why we've got to use these special clips. Let's see if Magic Mike can 
grab a hold of one of them. There we go. We'll uh, pull this one out like so. This is the one we'll work with. So I just want to stress, it's light sensitive. Blank on both sides. What we're going to do is place this one down over here. We're going to put the little glass on that blank card, the card that's blank on both sides. Yep, the little glass is on top of that blank card, blank on both sides. Blank on both sides. Very important that we stress that. Now I'm going to get uh, forgetful. We'll get you to say stop. And that's how he's going to select a card from this deck of cards. So can you say stop as I riffle through the deck? <laughs> he, he fell to sleep again. Hey, wake up. Come here. There we go, because the boys and girls are going to get bored. Oh, with Let that, alone magic stop knife. as you riffle through the deck. Right there. Not this one now, but this one. We'll show everybody the card he said stop at is the four, the four of spades. Now, we have to really think, really concentrate on this one. And we're going to picture the black. Orange juice, orange juice. And orange the four. Juice, orange juice. That has what a What are you doing? And now. Oh, I'm concentrating. If we move over orange here. Juice, orange juice, orange juice. We'll remove the little glass. And we'll show that the card that was blank on both sides is no longer blank on both sides, but now, in fact, carries the impression of the four of spades. Wow! Like so. That's mind-boggling. Kind of different. Oh, it? hey, Wiz, that was simply bodacious. And thank you, boys and girls at home, for helping with your magic. Oh, That's so amazing. Well. There we I go. I couldn't believe that. That's a new effect. Oh. A <laughs> I love those puppets. <laughs> Bodacious. <laughs> uh, uh, I was very lucky in those days that um, his name is Daryl Scarrett. He worked both puppets. And in fact, during the course of that show, uh, that was circa 1991, by the way, um, okay. he created a number of other characters as well, puppets. But those two, Desmond and Forgetful, were the most popular and still are to this day. We recorded that show um it ran the season was nine nine years um but really there was three different shows over the nine years there was kitty cabaret where i'm sort of um a ring not a ring leader a ring master and i okay. do magic tricks but i'm surrounded by clowns colorful clowns and there, there's a clown wow. college skit and all this and wow. um eventually it morphed um, if you read my my bio, you'll you'll understand why. Uh, a Man for All Seasons is the name of the book. Look it up on Amazon. In any mm -hmm. case, um, it morphed into this show, Magic Mike's Castle, because I always loved the medieval thing. And I, of course, painted the sets and the props. And um, it was almost like do-it-yourself television. Um, it aired on uh, Cable 11 in, in mm -hmm. Winnipeg, Videon. Mm -hmm. And we just had a blast. Uh, the original concept between you and me and our audience, and I'm sure people can guess that, it was kind of like a Letterman-esque thing. I mean, um, there was a lot of adult jokes in there that the adults would get, but the kids mm -hmm. loved it as well. But really, mm -hmm. I'm mocking kid shows, but it, it, I don't know if that came across. It probably came across as a very straight kid show. Uh, of course, I was influenced by a show called Friendly Giant, which took place in a castle and he had puppets. And um, Mr. Dress Up, another Canadian show, very similar in a way. And uh, an American show, you may remember Mr. Rogers. So yes. I love these shows. I watch these shows as adults, not as a kid. Oh, and Reading oh. Rainbow. I loved LeVar Burton and that, that show yeah, as well. We, so we try we, to encourage. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Uh, you remember. You remember. Yeah. So that was that that was really the influence was all of that because it was my actually not even childhood, my adulthood, but I'm kind of mocking in a way, but it was a very good natured thing. The adult jokes hopefully were not recognizable by the kids and the kids uh on the street they would yell and throw things at me no they would yell magic mike magic <laughs> mike. yeah yeah great oh. fun i was very yeah. lucky plus the agents took advantage of that in a good way for me that was my gimmick in winnipeg canada for nine mm. years and um, i was very lucky 
lucky to um, to have that show. I was the producer, but we also had uh, it was a full studio. Uh, so we had what we call switchers. So they'd switch from this camera to the other camera and, and all mm -hmm. that. And I had to do a rundown sheet, which was fascinating because each of the segments would be uh, broken down in minutes and all that sort of thing. That was um, oh. great fun. Nine years of that. Then I switched the theme a little bit and made it in present day, uh, present day castle, simply because not that I didn't love the costumes, but at the time I was, I began guesting on a show called Skittle Bits with Joey. Joey was a Juno award winner. Juno is uh, the equivalent to the Grammys in Canada. Okay. And uh, I, I convinced him to put me on his show doing caricatures, doing magic. And I was very lucky that had a huge audience who was broadly seen uh, down in the States. So that would be Fargo and Grand Forks and adjacent <laughs> provinces. It's true. Uh, Saskatchewan, uh, Ontario and all of that. So I was very lucky to have Joey accept me um, to be on his show as well. Um, so yes, because his show took place in modern day and in a modern day attic, I thought, well, I'd be stupid. I'd look, I'd feel stupid to show up in a medieval costume in present day in his present day attic. So I decided his show is really important. It's a good break for me. So I dressed uh, a little too much like Copperfield and would come on his show once a week, every week for about a year or two and changed a little bit the look of my TV show to accommodate his. Um, so that's the story behind the TV shows, which ended finally, I'm sure all the audiences, and people still remember me in Winnipeg for that show, poor people. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure they were happy to see that show finally end in 94, June, 1994. And, um, a lot of things got tied up then and uh, decided, okay, had enough of minus 40 and minus 40 wind chill. Let's move to a part of Canada, unbeknownst to the rest of Canada, that has moderate temperatures, i.e. Mm. no snow. Mm. That's how I ended up in Vancouver. So, oh. um, yeah, uh, back in September 94. What month are we? Uh, it'll be exactly 30 years, September, in a couple of months uh, that wow. I've moved out here. Wow. Very yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so much has happened since, of course, since I landed. Um, uh, <laughs> I came over on the Mayflower to Vancouver. No, there's a, a, a <laughs> movers that are called Mayflower, so I use that joke often. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, we yeah. have Mayflower, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was quite an adventure because everything I was used to doing for years, animation, cartooning, um, singing, graphic design, magic. And I was getting, I'm not saying this to brag, I'm saying this because I'm very grateful. Um, uh, I won't give the amount, um, but uh, the TV show allowed me and my agents to get top dollar for me. I come out to Vancouver and it's like there's only two working magicians. Well, there's a lot of magicians, it's a wonderful community, but there's not a lot of opportunity. You would think that there would be, and I, I never visited Vancouver, I probably should have. And I came out here and it's like, oh dear, there's no work for graphic designers. There's no work, <laughs> cartooning? No, what, what's that? Not what's that, but th there were not, they were using syndicated comics by the cartoonists right, and right. Uh, and magic shows wow um in some instances i'm gonna say this in retrospect uh as a joke but it really happened i'd have people phoning me from corporations asking me to pay them to do a show and nowhere in north america I, i've been all over north america with my stuff I've never encountered that before in my life. I've been approached from, by magazines for me to pay to have articles in their paper. And it's like, are you kidding me? So I don't understand, that. I still don't understand that mindset. I probably never will. Um, I miss every day, and I'm gonna say that, 
the East. I miss Winnipeg. I miss Toronto. I miss Montreal. I know New York because my family, half my family is from there. But um, I'm so thankful several years ago for discovering this, this venue, if you will, which enables mm -hmm. me to be seen globally from the comfort of my home. I'm very grateful. Yeah, I well, I'll, I'll tell you, we're, we're grateful for you. Um, we think you, we think you're a national treasure. Uh, <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm very, I'm very grateful to be able to call you my friend. And um, <clears throat> before, before we get any uh, mercier. Um, and these are all out of order now. Um, we're going to take a little break and I'm going to, um, I'm going to offer a thing off of my, off of my website for free, including free postage worldwide. Uh, if someone can answer a trivia question, and the trivia question is, see if I can find this. Um, okay, so this magician used to hum loudly instead of using an orchestra while performing tricks that often failed. Who was the man often credited with inventing comedy magic? I would say in, probably in America, probably somebody different in the UK. So put your answers in the chat, and whoever puts the right answer in first will get one of these absolutely free and will be the right. I think we oh, I'm getting so many messages. Um, sorry. Uh, what am I trying to do? Okay, here we go. We're gonna remove him for a second and go here. Mind Over Magic is sponsored by The Magic Taboo Magic Shop for unique magic and mentalism. Visit www. TheMagicTaboo.com We don't want, so we're going to clear these by giving them a little wipe with a chalk And then rub that in, and that will keep the bad juju, if you will, from affecting what we're going to do today. And so that's one right there. And then we'll do the same thing with the next one, and we'll just rub that all the way in. And the same on the other side. And basically what we're going to do here is um, try and, and get a message from the spirit of the universe, a better place, just by, by thinking in a higher vibration, if you will. So we now have um, four clear slates and hopefully no negative vibrations. I want you to imagine, Jill, in your mind that each one of these has a big number written on it. So one, two, three, and four. And I want you to imagine picking two of these slates up and handing them to me 
Which two would you pick up and hand to me? The two end ones. So one and four. Yeah? Yes. Okay. So I'll take those and put them with the bag. And that leaves us with the two remaining ones. And what I normally would say here is that I'm going to call out to the universe, asking the universe to bring us a universal truth uh, or positive message, and hopefully it will appear inside the the uh, slates, okay? And we'll both think spirit of the universe give us a sign, uh, give us a message. You don't have to close the eyes, but you can if you want. Oh! Ooh. Wow. Be careful I, what you I, wish. I, I know, I, I, I just, I just get, felt like a, a spark. Um, wow, well, this is... It says love to all. I think it's a wonderful message. Thank you, uh, Jill, for helping me there. Alright, so, um, during that, we got four answers from people in the audience. I'm not sure if anybody on Facebook uh, put in any answers. I don't think so, but let's take a look and see. No. So, Simon said Billy McComb. Um, Al said, Al gave two answers, Art Mentrano, and then Andrew said Roy Benson, and then Al said Carla Ballantyne, and the answer I was looking for was Carla Ballantyne, um, who happens to be one of one of my inspirations for being funny. Um, um, Al said he never hummed, but I've, I've seen clips where he did hum. So um, I, I say, yes, he did. But um, Al, as far as I'm concerned, uh, you, you won. So if you want to DM me your um, address. I will mail this to you uh, absolutely for free. And please recommend uh, the Magic Taboo to all of your Magic friends. And now let's go back to talking with our friend Dr. Michael Eike. Let's bring him back right here. Yay! Yeah, yeah, I love that effect you did with the uh, with the slates. It's one of my favorite. Um, I don't know if it's Al Baker or who I forget. I used to know, but I, as you know, uh, yeah, it's by a guy named Doctor Daly. Doctor um, Daly, that's right. That's right. Yeah. I should know. It's the name yeah. of the effect. I should and, know. And truth be told, I should make a prop. I can make up the effect. Um, Dr. Gainey did, um, and you can find the effect in the book Practical Mental Effects by Theodore Angelman. Well, he, he compiled it, um, and uh, it's a really great effect. I know you do it using bigger slates. Um, I yes. just wanted, I wanted a pocket size one. It comes with a really nice Throw that bag, and I'll show you the the. I mean, I know you see it, but I love that watch. feature that you could carry it's, it in your pocket. So yeah, cool. exactly. They, if you don't want to use a bag, you can just 
tuck them away. I like putting them in the bag. It gives it a little bit of a, a mystery to it. And uh, the only thing that is not supplied is a piece of chalk, but it's easy to find. You get a whole box of them for a dollar, like a dollar store or a pound store. Um, so yeah, Al, congratulations. Thank you for um, putting your address in there. I will mail this out to you um, probably on Monday. Okay? So congratulations. And um, the other answers were great, but as far as I know, um, that monitor was given to Colorado Bank. Anyway, I could be wrong. I'm, I've only been doing this for 50 years. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, not this, but, um, you know, magic. Anyway, um, Dr. Michael, um, what got you into doing bizarre magic? Because I know you like doing that nowadays. Um, yeah, what, what got you into doing bizarre stuff? So you, you said you wouldn't be in your, in your normal bizarre garb tonight. So, um, yeah. I did that on purpose too. So, um, <laughs> it, it really, it was kind of an evolution. And I'm glad you asked me that question because a lot of folks from Winnipeg, Canada, they know me from the the video that you showed from my show. And I did, oh, wow, about 250 shows a year for about a dozen years in Winnipeg. That's a lot of shows and a lot of yep. exposure. So they, re they still remember me looking like what you showed. Right. And right. when I've gone back a couple of times in the last 10 years to Winnipeg to do... Um, book signings um they remember me they know the voice for some reason i don't think my voice is particularly special but people seem to think it is or they uh, you know um anyway they recognize me now for my voice um it's an evolution i loved always uh, creepy things i loved always uh scary things as i mentioned earlier and it was around the time I went for, I auditioned at the Magic, uh, for the Magic Circle. That was during lockdown. Um, it was a time when we weren't flying. There was, we had to stay in our homes and thank goodness for Zoom. Um, because I did my audition, my initial one, and then there's another one you do, which was totally nerve wracking uh, for me. That was my own issues. I, I'm not saying this to brag. I'm saying this because it's true. I, I'm not nervous doing magic anymore. I love it. I feel like I'm sharing uh, tricks. I'm going to say tricks, uh, illusions and stuff with people. It comes from my heart in a way. Um, but that, I've never felt so nervous as my magic circle audition. But everything yeah. leading up to it, there is a reason why I'm sharing this. There is a reason for it was what what effect or effects to do so i went back this was less than five years ago probably three years ago was my audition i don't remember um i went back something said cups and balls and that's mm. also partially because uh prince charles now king charles there's a famous picture of him with his cups and balls be uh, yeah. the magic circle logo and all that so i i felt i should go traditional in some way and i had a two cup routine which i i've done on those two shows i believe open mic and or tuesday night magic and um it, it was a for me a difficult routine created by um gary willette of the camera oh, and yeah. academy from the 90s and mm -hmm. so i had to relearn it i hadn't touched it since the 90s and as i'm practicing that particular routine by the way i, I did two other routines for the audition but that was the main one the showpiece if you will um mm -hmm. I, I started to get messages which for me is not unusual. It might sound kind of wonky, but I get these ideas and these messages, inspiration, if you will, do or use Walt Disney music. And I thought, what? Mm -hmm. 
from my animation training, which was Disney, Walt Disney-esque, um, mm -hmm. we learned that there's ups and downs, just like a story or a play. So it starts off with punch, then it valleys, then it builds again. And no one else is a master of emotions, roller coaster emotions, than Disney and his music. So mm -hmm. um, I, I wouldn't be allowed, I wouldn't think, to use Disney music. So I, I got royalty free music online and, and tried out a few things. But as I'm doing that, I'm picturing a genuine castle. I'm picturing England from the 1800s and all the trappings that you and I love and, and other bizarres or, or uh, mentalists as well love. And um, something stuck. So in my head, I'm doing, I'm virtually looking like this, auditioning uh, with a, a plain background because I was advised just use a plain background, nothing fancy. And I got the word a month or two later, I got the phone call, a famous magician, I forget his name right now, he's British. Uh, you're in, Michael. So that was the start of a certain feel. Uh, I know this is a bit intangible to explain, but I think you'll, you'll get it. Um, a feel for old things again. I hadn't had that feel not just me because I am old, but a feel for old English castles and the, the wind mm. and the dust and Dracula and all these sorts of things. And um, then I came across, I'm a big fan. It's funny you mentioned Ted Anneman uh, earlier. Um, that was one of my first books was Practical Mental Effects by Ted yeah. Anneman. I was 14 yeah. years old and um, yeah. just learning a lot of other stuff. And I just happened to thumb through it. And there was the cephalalgia, that's the proper pronunciation, cephalalgia, yeah. which uh, essentially means headache. I think it's Latin for headache. The spelling was changed because of the magician who created that effect, Stuart James. So he added in uh, um, those uh, two letters from his first and last name in the cephalalgia. Mm -hmm. And the cephalalgia, I'm not doing this. No, I don't want to plug this book right now. But on the yeah. cover of one of my we books, will admit. We will admit. Yeah. on the Go cover ahead. of one of my books is a cephalalgia that I built myself. So it's a little oblong cabinet with um, a drape that goes across it to close it and a skull that sits on top and neat manifestations happen. You open up the curtain and something appears. You close the curtain and open it. Something else happens. It intrigued me in all those years since I was about 14, I wanted to make it. I didn't know Abbott's make, makes it as well. They make uh, a different version, but uh, this is the original one that I made. And um, that, that put me over the edge. After that, I had to incorporate skulls. I had to incorporate smoke. I had to incorporate spooky things. So that with my mentalism, which was actually my first love, mentalism, not magic, mentalism was my first love, then I'm running with it. So that, that was the start, only about four years, my foray into uh, what, as magicians, we call bizarre magic or spooky magic. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Yeah, um, I, I love bizarre magic. I started getting into it about four years ago or so. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, in the future, I have a, a number of bizarre performers coming on besides yourself. So we'll be talking more about that in other episodes as well. But right now, um, this is, I want to go into a special portion of the show uh, called Magic Book Corner, where you and I are going to share our current favorite books. So, uh, hang on. That's a lot of books. <laughs> a lot of books. 
<laughs> I wish I could say, I, I actually probably do have that many now, but um, it looks like a lot more in, in that video. I, the book that I originally was going to open up the cell with, oh, Joe's here, um, uh, was a completely different book, but I decided on this one um, because I think it's an important book. It's not your typical magic book per se. It is written by a magician, but it's about how to uh, promote yourself, and it has some really great ideas. It's called How to successfully sell yourself uh, by Paul Fred. And Paul is an amazing performer. He performs and lectures all around the world. And um, I've learned some really great bits of information out of here. He talks about uh, um, uh, Active promoting versus passive promoting, um, and uh, I've always been a lot better at the passive promoting because that means I don't have to do anything. And 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 uh, it wasn't until I started doing more active promoting that I actually started getting work. So uh, I really recommend this book. Uh, to anyone, whether you're just starting out or you've been in the business for a long time. It was written about eight years ago, but it's still, um, the info in here is still pretty much up to date. He even gives examples of his own um, literature, so like, he has his own business card and explains why his business plan works. Uh, he has um, postcards in here, uh, uh, front and back, with very little information, but all the information um, says you want to hire me before you hire somebody else. And that's it's really what it's all about. And um, so this is my favorite book right now and um you can get it on his website i believe paulplater.com and uh it usually comes for free if you buy something else so if he has any left over um you'll probably get one but you can also buy it anyway uh michael i went well, before the show i asked you if you had a favorite book and you said well yeah, but I, I wrote it, and I was like, that's fine. So <laughs> what what uh, what book are we um, promoting today? Uh, well, you know what? I was being facetious when I said that to you. No, I, I know that. I know that. I know you do. But I was also thinking, my goodness, I'm not saying this to brag as well. I'm saying it because I don't get that I've written 85 books, and they're on Amazon. Right. Yeah. Uh, most of them are metaphysical self-help. About 20 of them are magic related, either geared towards non-magicians or magicians. And mm -hmm. so I thought what came to mind right away and it was staring me in, in my face because my bookcase is right there, right across from me, mm -hmm. is the third in the series. This is called Psyched and uh, it's available on Amazon. Um, it's had really good reviews from magicians. Now, the way I've written it, and there's tons of photographs in here, I've taken some of my best bizarre magic effects. Um, some are not original. Some are evolutions of other effects. As, as you know, magic tends to work that way. And I wrote it up, explained in great detail, but yet it's general enough that lay people won't there's no secrets revealed in here you you can read this backwards and forwards as a lay person and and they'll be intrigued by it but they couldn't possibly know 
the hints and stuff I was saying sort of the way Penn and Teller do so they don't give away the the um, the people's um, uh, secrets. It's written mm. like that. And I love it because now I'm going to get facetious again. It's chock full of photographs also of myself in my formative years throughout. Yes. Oh, my goodness, was that me? And um, um, <laughs> what um, all my magic mic books or Dr. Well, Michael? We get, we get myself out of here. So, so those again. So <laughs> I feel like could... I'm doing a book test. You realize that, don't you? <laughs> Let's stop here. Yeah, stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's really good because look where we stopped. We stopped at a picture of my mom and holding me up, uh -huh. if you can believe that. So that was pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> a little bit scary, but nonetheless, we we stopped at a good place. And the word, the one word on that page, no, we're not going to do that. There's my mom and dad in there as well. My dad was a drummer in Montreal. And oh, New York, wow. way back in the day. And uh, so there's about 70 or 80 pages of photographs. That's me at age four. Frightening little tyke. Look how huge my head is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's still, it, it hasn't shrunk at all. And here I am. I, I was always a little bit overweight, but who cares? And that's me in... High school, I loved the Mod Squad, and I used to love to yeah. dress like uh, like yeah. Pete. If yeah, anybody remembers that. Yeah. Here I am, eleven. I used to have hair like that. I used to have hair like that. I know wow. all of us, huh? I actually used to have a a touch a touch like that too. But, oh, yeah. well, for sure, for sure. Yeah, those, those my, were incredible my days. Yeah, my high school yearbook that we could have been twins. <laughs> I believe that. I believe that was a trend in Montreal <laughs> and Toronto and, and New York where we all had afros. We walked around with afros and and uh, maybe because I was shorter, I had those, I uh, forget what kind of sh platform shoes, you know, I'd lost all my weight by then. So I must have been a frightful sight, but it was great fun as well. So yeah. <laughs> So this is my book, one of my books, Psyched, available on Amazon. Um, and you can Google it as well. Nice. Um, you know, yeah. it's, it's... Um, guys, go out, go out and get this book. It's, uh, I've I've read uh, I've read. Uh, it wasn't the same book that you sent me, was it? No, I sent you my yeah. latest one, my it's latest like one, I... which yeah. Yeah. which I'll be using yeah. in one of my talks, one of my lectures in the fall at a university here, a local yeah. university. So, yeah, transcending. Yes, definitely, yeah. Definitely yes. check out his books. I just want to acknowledge that we have a few people watching on Facebook. We have Roy Stone watching, and he says he loves your background. Um... Uh, our mutual friend, Tony Iacoviello, uh, who says he loves both of us, so we love you too. And then the lovely Celeste Love is watching us as well. Yay. And she, sa she says, hello, handsomes. So uh -oh. <laughs> That's you. Says, that's, well, no, that's it's you. plural. It's plural. <laughs> It's, uh, it's, both, it's, it's both of us. But, don't, but soon, don't be jealous. Don't be jealous. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> so we have about five minutes left. And before we wrap this up, I just want to um, say thank you so much for uh, being on the show. And, um, My pleasure. Before we go, is there anything that you've learned in, you've learned in your time as a musician that you would uh, like to share to the massive community? Thank you for your support. 
particularly, well, all the clubs across Canada are are great. The, the guys are all great. Uh, and in the States as well, I've been to a few Magic meetings there. So Magic is also about community. It's about sharing history, props. I'm very grateful to be part of that. And also part of, and I'm going to give a plug outwardly to yours and Kevin's and Robina's two shows on the Tuesday night, Tuesday Night Magic Theater on Facebook and Open Mic Magic on the Wednesday of which I participate um, as much as I can, which seems to be twice a week. And I'm grateful and you're part of that as well. I'm so grateful for that. It gives me something to look forward to, to share magic. Well, like I said before, we are extremely grateful to have you on the show. It's really not my show anymore, the um, Tuesday night matches. I, I always appreciate that they, uh, they give me uh, a, a, a credit for, for being one of the founders. But technically, now Kevin and Robin's baby, I just perform on it, and this is my, my baby. Speaking of your friend. baby. <laughs> Come here. Oh, my, such a cute baby oh. boy. My baby boy. <laughs> yeah, this is bad. That could have been us in the 70s, yeah. Tommy, with all the fur. I know, I know. Uh, well, I mean, I used to have I used to have long hair like you did too. And um I actually I kinda of miss it. Um but oh yeah. So the other thing I wanted to say real quick is Normally after this show, I'm going to leave it open so we can all hang out a little bit if you want to. But today I actually, I have to leave like right at five because I promised my friend and mentor Kent Nipper to help with his event that he's doing tonight, which is the second half of his No Equivoke Equivoke workshop which is, part one was amazing. Um, so I really am honored to be a, a part of that. But um, once again, Michael, I'm so glad we became friends. I'm so glad that I get to work with you on a weekly basis. I'm going to unmute everybody so now um, we can have everybody applaud. So let me uh, okay, no, wait a minute. you're going to have to unmute yourself, I can't unmute you, but unmute yourself and please give Michael Reiki a big round of applause, look at that, look at that audience, let me go to the gallery view, everyone is happy for you Michael, we all love you, and thank, thank you, you for so doing much. what, thank you for doing what you do, and um, uh, yeah, so we're going to close the show with a, another video, if I can find it. And uh, next week, my guest will be the very funny and very wacky Charles Snyder. And um, we, I know it's going to be a great episode. So uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you all, everyone on Facebook for watching. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You've been watching Mind Over Mind Magic, over magic with Tommy Burnett. Tommy Burnett you will know. Mr. Thank you to Dr. Michael Likey. Next week's guest is Mr. Charles Schneider. See you next week. Sponsored by... Every Saturday, tune in at 4 Eastern... Magic Caboot.